beauty of the omnipotent God is delightfully shown in Siam, a gorgeous jewel in a travel cave of world wonders. Here in southern Asia, the modern and the ancient unite in mystic splendor with a majority of Siam's 15 million people loyal to the great Buddha, who they believe showers their luscious plains with tropical sunlight, a radiant sunlight that, like a dazzling opiate, lulls the heart of Siam into lavish luxury. So the grateful Siamese salute the sun with Vatarun, the temple of the dawn. Nearby is Phla Patom Shadi, enshrined in an isle of trees. Vat Po, largest temple of Bangkok, where the boy king Ananda Mahidal prays for Siam. Vat Ben Sham of Opator, a white marble edifice with gold tile roof, bejeweled ornamentation and superb modern temple design, the most exquisite architecture of its kind on earth. Assembly Hall, Court of Kings, where a Council of Regency now governs Siam, sometimes called Ta'il, a free land. Free and peaceful, from the poor peasant in shabby Panung to the rich in oriental silks, the Siamese are a lovable, leisurely race. Like life in Bangkok, the Shofia River flows lazily under the majestic memorial bridge, a monument to the dynamic energy of former King Prohyaripok. The Midtown Canal, where Bangkok comes to life in a merry melange of moving enterprise. Here a myriad variety of goods are sold, from pottery, clothes and farm crops to costly gems, while boat restaurants cater to the drifting throng, and a bargain is a bargain in floating ship or bargain basement. Several canals like this are the very lifelines of the nation's commerce. The watery mart is at the junction of two canals in Bangkok, Siam's capital city of half a million. Charcoal fires cook fish and meat in the floating lunch wagons, and the restaurateur is a Norseman chef and waiter combined. A polyglot of life that contrasts luxury launches with dinky junks. Symbolic of the beautiful soul of Siam are the spires of the magnificent temples that spread out in a court of honor behind the grand gate of Bangkok. This maze of gorgeous architecture is approached by a picturesque promenade leading to three temples of ultra-elegance. Here the golden stupa is on the left. The middle building, the Mahamandhap, contains the Buddhist Bible, while on the right is the Debidhara, an elaborate hall of fame containing statues of ancient kings who are revered as national heroes. Ahead rise the ornate gables of a dominating edifice. Washed by rains of a monsoon climate and shimmering in a torrid sun, the Temple of the Emerald Buddha enhances a veritable city of temples. Its columns glitter with gold leaf adornments, and under its eaves, the song of the breeze is heightened with a ceaseless clatter, a never-ending jangle which is contrived by tinkling bells whose tongues whirl leaf-shaped tappers in merry discord. At the gable point over its stately entrance is the image of the deity wrought in gold. Because natural wealth and man riches unite to make Siam one of the most fabulous nations, her people are generous to religion. Significant of the concept that the good have wings, in this setting of bewildering charm are two striking figures, Kinari, half woman and half bird, and in another spot along the David Hara Plaza is the image of Kinara, half man and half bird. Guarding the sacred portals of the great court within the Grand Gate and representing constant power are two monumental giants who specially protect the temple of the Emerald Buddha. 
a masterpiece of mosaic art, is the green-tinged Goliath named Toscanta, who is armed with a mighty sword. His face is as terrifying as his size, and he wears his mascots in his hat. While his colleague on the right, Sahasdeya, would scarcely make a proper ad for a beauty parlor either. You've got to look worse than the devil to scare the devil away. The religious fervor of Siam has idealized the character of her people. Brown-skinned, soft-spoken, these dancing girls of exquisite culture display the training of a lifetime. Their classical performance on the steps of Siam's constitutional memorial in the Royal Plaza is in effect an intricate religious ritual. Each movement of the fingers, toes, ankles and wrists reveals a worshipful pose, piquant grace and superb self-control. It is the very ultimate of Siamese poetry in motion. A cultured deb in modern oriental silks displays the infinite fascination and charm of exquisite beauty. And one can certainly smile with her smiling. Young women of the upper classes with finishing schools and universities have every attainment of American socialites and display smart refinement plus the shy native oriental attraction that has enamored the world. The Siamese are a sports-loving race. Besides cockfighting, horse racing and fish fighting, young college athletes stage an annual rowing regatta on the Shofia River. This yearly classic is a picturesque and animated spectacle with the honor of a national championship as the prize. To speed the oars, one crew replaces the coxswain's megaphone with music. Everything is quite formal, but the exhibition has true carnival atmosphere. All Bangkok and the rest of Siam contribute to the crowd for this occasion, with many of the fans in their own river craft out to see the fun. Conspicuous among the throng are the food boats, the equivalent of roadside hot dog stands and wayside soda fountains. Unlike the average Varsity 8 of American boat crews, any number of oarsmen may man a Bangkok racing boat, and sometimes as many as 38 occupy one craft. But the flat-bottomed affair is unwieldy and much slower than the Yankee shell. Cheering competition nevertheless peps up the spirit of the contest. So the end of the race marks the end of a visit to a paradise peopled by the most attractive children of humanity. A land of lordly grandeur, imposing temples, scenic beauty and haunting delights.